Berlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Starlink satellites to an altitude of 290 kilometers above the Earth's surface. At this time, second stage is fully fueled and liquid oxygen loading is currently underway on both first and second stage. The stack of 60 satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the pointed enclosure on the very top of the rocket. And we've got a nice view of the uh, satellites stacked up right there. The, these are flat satellites, so you can see that there on your screen. And once we reach the vacuum of space, we will deploy the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to its final orbit. So far, weather is looking good during our launch window for an on-time launch, but we'll be keeping an eye on, the, on this all the way down to T minus zero. The Air Force range is prepared to support today's mission. Waters are clear of any ships and the range continues to ensure the safety of our launch. The vehicle, satellites, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. Today, most of your satellite internet services come from geostationary satellites or geosats. A single geosat will serve a fixed but broad area and is typically placed about 35,000 kilometers or higher above the Earth. Now, one of the main drawbacks of that high altitude is high latency or delay in that signal that's provided because they're so far above the Earth. Starlink, on the other hand, is a constellation of multiple satellites that orbit the planet, but at much lower, at about 550 kilometers. Because of this low orbit, latency is much lower than with satellites in geostationary orbit. This enables Starlink to deliver services like seamless video calls that are usually not possible on other satellite internet systems. And because Starlink satellites fly in a global constellation, we can bring high-speed internet to places that previously had terrible service or no service at all. Some of the most exciting opportunities for Starlink are rural or remote locations where traditional fiber or cable just isn't practical. And Starlink can also deliver high-speed internet to locations where fiber and cable aren't possible at all, such as a cruise ship or an airplane. Building a constellation that can provide this level of service is incredibly challenging, but we are making steady progress towards that goal with every Starlink launch. And one quick note, during our last launch, we mentioned that we were experimenting with a darkening treatment on one of our satellites. This is part of an effort to minimize reflections from the satellites that may be distracting to some astronomers during their observations of the night sky. It takes a few weeks for those satellites to reach their final orbit destination, so we don't have the results of that dark set experiment just yet, but we'll be sure to share what we've learned as the data becomes available. We are currently a little bit over four minutes from liftoff, and Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. At T minus seven minutes, engine chill began. This is where we allow a small amount of the super chilled liquid oxygen to flow into the Merlin turbo pumps prior to the full flow of liquid oxygen into the vehicle, and that's to avoid any shocks to the system. Liquid oxygen is also what's creating the white puffs around Falcon 9. We continue to load super chilled liquid oxygen or LOX into the stage until just before liftoff. And when that super chilled LOX comes in contact with the ambient air around it, it creates those white clouds surrounding the vehicle that you can see there on your screen. And just a few moments ago, around T minus four and a half minutes, the transporter erector retracted away from the rocket slightly. And this provides clearance for Falcon 9 to lift off. The first and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. First stage should finish prop loading at T minus three minutes and second stage at T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, be sure to listen in to the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. This booster has launched from our 39A launch pad, our Vandenberg launch pad, and it is now getting ready for liftoff from our Slick 40 launch pad today. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking good, and the range is green for launch. So let's listen in to the last few minutes of the countdown.
Stage two loss, so it's closed out. Ground gas close out starting. Falcon 9 from startup. Ground gas close up. Complete. All these go for launch. T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Vehicles pitching down range. Stage one propulsion is normal. It is T plus 45 seconds, and we've just had a nominal liftoff of our Falcon 9 vehicle carrying our Starlink payload on its way to its targeted orbit. In just about 20 seconds coming up here, we will be passing through max Q. Falcon 9 is supersonic. That is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will see, which is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees throughout ascent. vehicle is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. And we've just heard that call out from Max Q. Coming up next in about a minute will be three events back to back, starting off with MECO or main engine cutoff, followed immediately by stage separation. And this is where the first stage separates from the second stage. And then followed by SES-1, which is second engine startup. And back engine chill. And we should be able to see all three of those events live on your screen. But right now we've got an awesome view looking aft on the vehicle with the earth in the background. Now, if you're just now joining us, we're about 30 seconds away from Miko main engine cutoff, stage separation and SES one or second engine start one Is that main engine cut off? Engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. You can see the stage separation. First stage separating from second stage on your left screen. And, and on the engine. right, second engine startup. That's that MVAC engine on our second stage. And there's that bright red glow on the engine. 
So now coming up in about 20 seconds is fairing deploy. And as Lauren mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to catch both payload fairing halves on our recovery vessels, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. We will un it will be unlikely that we will see these live on the webcast. So we'll bring you updates as they become available. But you can also check into our social media for updates as well. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that call out for fairing separation. There's fairing deploy. You can see that on your right screen. Those fairing halves are now making, you can see that on your screen actually, the fairing halves are making their way back to Earth and hopefully we can catch those on our recovery vessels. AOS Bermuda. Okay, so we have on both sides of your screen here, we got stage one on the left and stage two on the right. So a lot of really cool stuff coming up all at once or in rapid succession here in the next few minutes. On the left side, what we're gonna see on the stage one side of things is at about T plus six minutes and 24 seconds, more or less, you're gonna hear the call out and hopefully visually see the stage one entry burn. That's where we reignite three of those uh, Merlin 1D engines and that allows the second, sorry, the first stage to slow down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's stage atmosphere. Stage two is on a nominal trajectory. All right, as you just heard, stage two is on a nominal trajectory. That's really cool. Meanwhile, stage one is coasting down, uh, getting ready for that entry burn. That burn's gonna last just under 20 seconds. After that entry burn, stage one will continue to coast down towards the drone ship. And at about T plus eight minutes or so, you're gonna hear the call out for the landing burn. That is where we reignite a single Merlin 1D engine, that center engine E9, and that slows the vehicle down to zero velocity. And hopefully you'll see a cool image of it standing right up on the drone ship. Meanwhile, stage two continues to perform nominally, wearing that MVAC is at full power. Now, right after the stage one landing, about 20 seconds later, you're gonna hear the call out for Seco one, that second engine cutoff one. That is where we cease to burn the second stage engine and takes us into our first coast phase. That stage two engine is burning with more than 200,000 pounds of thrust as it takes that stack of 60 Starlink satellites to its first parking orbit. Stage one entry start up. All right, you see that entry burn as it started. So we lost the image, but hopefully it'll come back. That entry burn was just under 20 seconds long. Meanwhile, stage two, stage as you one, can see, entry shut down. stage two continues to burn, and we just heard the call out that the entry burn on stage one has concluded. Stage two continues on a nominal trajectory. So we're a little bit under uh, a minute from the landing burn start. Meanwhile, stage two, as you just heard, continues on a nominal trajectory. Stage one, transonic. And just under 15 seconds, stage one should start that landing burn. Hopefully stage we'll one get landing start up. Back. Okay. 
Right, that landing burn is currently going. Unfortunately, we don't have the video from the vehicle, but we do have the drone Stage one video. landing light deploy. Stage two is in terminal guidance. All right, and yes. Awesome. That's the third landing of this booster. Second time landing on, of course, I Still Love You. Captain Man has landed. Operators, please proceed. Very to cool. And safe. any second now, we should be seeing Seco 1. That is where that second stage engine will cut off. Got that animation there, but... Let's still listen out for the call. Perfect, shut down. All right, as you just heard, second engine shut down. Oh, it's Cape expected. And we got confirmation that we're in a good orbit. All right, so we're now going to enter a coast phase. So we're going to take a quick break. Orbit but insertion. we'll be leaving you with an animation that shows where we are in the coast phase. And we'll be back at about T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relight, followed by another brief coast and then payload deploy. Hopefully we'll be able to bring you that payload deploy live on the webcast. So we'll see you back here in just over 35 minutes.